changing the world. They're leading unapologetically, taking ownership of their desire for wealth, and they are serving through selling. Welcome to the Smart Leader Sell podcast. I am Jessica Lorimer, and this week we're going to be talking about public accountability and the real effect that it has on your business. So I guess my first thing to say is that public accountability has been around in some shape or form for centuries within the sales world. I know that back when I was in corporate, I used to have a mentor who I hugely respected. And every day he would walk in and he would grab his latte and he would rock up to the desk of the person nearest to him and announce the whole team, show me the money in a very Jerry Maguire-esque kind of way. And he'd kind of slam his hands down on the desk and say, Jess, where is the money coming from this week? And publicly, I would have to say, I think this deal is going to come in, or I think that this client is going to be closed this week, or I think that this negotiation is going to go well or fall through. And it was that idea of public accountability that made me have that such a strong desire to not fail to not let the team down, to be publicly accountable and held accountable by other people for hitting those targets. And I think for women, this is something that we see a lot. And I was talking to a, a friend and esteemed colleague of mine recently, Heather Gray, who runs a fantastic podcast called the Business Mindset Mastery Podcast. You can find her on iTunes. Um, but we are having a conversation over Voxer because we Vox pretty much every day. And we were talking about public accountability with regards to business building. And the one thing that we both agreed on was that when you pay to play, you publicly commit to more. You will hold yourself accountable in a different way than you perhaps would do if you were showing up for something that was free. Now, I want to dig into that because on the surface, it seems pretty innocuous and fairly shallow, but I want to give you a couple of examples. So. The first one is weight loss. Wherever you are in the world, there is no doubt that if you are a woman, you will have seen marketing from companies like Weight Watchers, Slimming World, Juice Plus, all of these different businesses. And they have a huge accountability model to their business. And it's one of the reasons that they're actually so successful. Because think about it, you can weigh yourself at home for free. But we don't. We don't weigh ourselves at home for free. What we prefer to do is we prefer to pay $6 a time to go in and have somebody else weigh us in front of 20 people so that we can publicly announce that we lost a pound or we gained a pound or more, depending on how good a week you've been having and whether or not you've been on holiday. And that public accountability keeps us motivated for the rest of the week because we don't want to turn up to this group circle and announce that we've put on weight. We want to turn up and we want to be celebrated because we've, we've hit our target. We're moving towards our targets. We're achieving. So public accountability has been around for a very long time. And, and in women, it has been particularly prevalent. It's been particularly prevalent around weight loss. It's particularly prevalent in industries like sales, um, like marketing, anything that is target driven, finance, that kind of thing. And in the online world, it's something that's become really interesting to me and to a few of my colleagues, because when we look at public accountability, you used to be able to do that in areas that were actually free of charge to you. You weren't paying for public accountability. Now, as you may or may not know, I run a free Facebook community and I've been running this Facebook community for a couple of years now. And every quarter in this community, we run a challenge uh, to inspire, to motivate, and to help people get momentum in their businesses in different areas. And every time we do these challenges in the, um, in the group, the group becomes this vibrant place of action takers and people hold themselves publicly accountable to day one, day two, day three, the tasks that are being set out. And it's fantastic because for three days, five days, seven days, um, even 14 days, we've had a, a few of them. These people are holding themselves publicly accountable to hitting a goal, to achieving a target, to gaining momentum in some way. And then after that, after that, 
challenge is done, what typically happens is there's, there's a kind of, I don't know, maybe we could call it like a momentum hangover. <laughs> there's a momentum hangover. And what happens is people retract for a little while. And it's usually a couple of days. And I try and schedule it so that it finishes on the weekend so people can go away and they can rest as normal. And we don't really get affected by it that much. But as a community, we find that we get these momentum hangovers and that after the challenge is done, it's like the public accountability piece has ended. But the difference is in my paid community, so in communities where people have paid to be there, I have an ongoing membership site, I run a variety of courses, a mastermind going on, all these kinds of things. In those communities, the, the momentum doesn't stop. The public accountability doesn't stop. People show up. They show up for the Q&As and they'll, they'll talk about where they are that week. They'll set out new plans, new strategies for moving forward. And people will check in with them and they will check in with themselves. And it seems like it is a very specific, it's a very specific mentality. And it's, it's a mentality that you seem to fall into when you are paying. Because it seems to me on the surface that actually when people are paying, they, they have this commitment to ongoing momentum. And it doesn't matter how much they're paying. Interestingly, you know, I have people who are in low end memberships that are paying sort of $47 a month, right up to people in high end masterminds who are paying considerably more. And actually they are taking the same amount of action in different ways. You know, they are still keeping themselves accountable. They are still holding others accountable. And it's really interesting that the shift is so noticeable from paid community accountability, action, momentum, to the way that free communities are starting to go, which is ultimately, if there isn't something specific going on, which is telling people, you must take this action, people are just kind of sitting back and they're being very passive about their business and about the action that they take. And I think that, you know, for me, that's, that's always an interesting one to watch because I obviously want to produce communities that are filled with action takers. And indeed we have enough people um, that say, yes, I'm a hell yes. And, and when we start this online business journey, most of us, um, <laughs> hopefully all of us come into it saying, we're going to be a hell yes. We're going to go, you know, all in, we're going to play full out. We're going to make this happen. We're going to take action every day, but it's very clear that a lot of people, unless somebody else is guiding the action or unless somebody is prepared to hold them publicly accountable, it seems to be very easy to put it off until tomorrow. And I guess that's the big difference between free communities and paid communities now is that paid communities, what's happening is that people are being not spoon fed, but they're being told regularly to engage. They're being engaged with themselves regularly and being told how to show up or given guidance on what to do. And in free communities that happens, but people don't value it because they're not committing to it financially because it becomes something that because it is free, they can take or leave. So if they don't like the advice that day or they don't like the uh, actionable step that day, they just don't show up. They don't do it. Whereas people in paid communities, what I'm seeing is that even if it's triggering them, they're doing the right things. They're still taking the action because they're recognizing that actually the worst thing you can do is be passive and stop. Because stopping ultimately leads to inaction, which leads to zero momentum, which leads to zero sales. And ultimately, I think it's that, it's that inaction that is stopping people stepping up in their business. It's stopping them becoming the leaders that they really want to be because they're not prepared to invest their time. They're not prepared to look at the things that they need to be doing every day, the boring things, the consistent things, unless there is somebody there who is going to call them out or unless there is somebody there that they are you know, waiting to be recognized by or whether or not there is somebody who is a biz bestie or an accountability buddy who's going to really jolt them into action when they're not feeling it. And that's, that's what I've really noticed over the last few weeks is that the difference between these free and paid communities is that 
people are not paying. And, and we've always known this as entrepreneurs, you know, this is nothing new in the online space. People are not paying for information. They're paying for implementation. They're paying for accountability. They are paying for validation. They're paying for that kick up the ass when they need it, quite frankly. And what free groups are doing, what these free spaces are doing is they are allowing people to check in and out as they want. You know, they're not holding people as accountable because let's face it, they can't, right? If you're a, if you're a group owner, if you are um, a leader in your space and you run any kind of free community, whether it's based on Facebook or any kind of other social media platform or forum, you cannot do the same things for people in your free community that you can do in paid communities. But it's interesting to see the difference in the way that these people show up. So how does that really link to obviously you taking a stand and you changing that and you as a leader impacting those people differently so that they do step up and either make a financial commitment or that they learn those behaviors, that they are able to put those behaviors on repeat and those habits on repeat, that they're showing up and doing the work consistently, even if perhaps they're not actually putting any, you know, putting any money into the pot, so to speak. And I think we have to look at three things. Firstly, we have to look at, are we running things regularly for our audience that are giving them that ability to be held publicly accountable? Are we giving them those opportunities? So if you are an online entrepreneur and you're thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. What I mean by that is, are you offering them opportunities to show up and declare what they have done? Are you offering them space to show their actions, to be validated uh, by other people, by yourself? about the work that they're putting in. Now that could mean that you're running free challenges. It could mean that you are um, sending daily emails to their inbox with action steps. It could be that you are showing up in a way you are perhaps doing live trainings or you're um, blogging consistently, or you're doing something that's showing them the power of consistent action and you're creating a space for them to share their consistent action and the things that they've been doing and be celebrated for that. The other thing is that you have to consider is, are there consequences if they don't? Um, now, one of the really interesting things for me is that back when I set up my Facebook group originally, and we're talking two years ago now, um, in 2015 that I set up my Facebook group and I wanted everyone to engage, you know, I wanted it to be this hub of activity and conversation and debate and all of these kinds of good things where future leaders could turn into leaders, where they could be formed, where they could form networks and connections. And over time, what I found was that actually some people were really stepping up and rising to that challenge and other people were just stepping out. Like they, they weren't checking in, they weren't invested in the group. They were just there. They were a vanity metric, a number. And the consequence of them not stepping up and taking action was twofold. One, they didn't step up. They didn't take action. So they didn't make the most use of the group. They didn't get the support that they perhaps needed. They didn't get access to the trainings that they perhaps wanted because they weren't checked in enough. They weren't accountable enough to themselves that they would make those things happen. The second thing was that I decided that absolutely, yes, there had to be a consequence. So what I decided to do was that if people did not engage, so if they didn't like, or they didn't comment, or they didn't take any kind of engagement action in the group for three months, that they would just be removed. So it created a consequence. It created this public accountability for people that if you were not willing to join the group and be a participant of some sort, if you were not willing to learn and develop in the group, if you were not willing to provide support to others or do the things that were basic business building and relationship building activities in the group, then there was a clear consequence. You would be removed. You wouldn't get access to any of the um, trainings. You wouldn't get access to any of the relationships or networks that you could be forming and therefore would lose sales. You know, and that's a serious consequence of people. And then the third thing that you have to look at is typically 
our audience reflect us. They reflect what we are doing. And so interestingly, you have to also look at how are you showing up? Are you holding yourself publicly accountable for the goals that you want to hit? And what I mean by that is not just are you doing it with a coach or with a mentor or somebody that you are paying the privilege for, but are you showing your audience that it's okay to hold yourself publicly accountable, that it's okay to set big goals, that it is okay to call yourself out on your own BS sometimes because we all have it, right? You know, nobody is perfect. And so it's really important when you are considering this public accountability piece and indeed the importance that it has for your audience, you've got to show up as a leader. You have the responsibility as a leader to show up in a way that means that they see it as being safe. They see it as being a normal way to behave and that they see it as something that is good and the benefit that it's going to have to their business. Now, I mean, you, you're probably thinking at this point, yeah, Jess, that's great. Public accountability, blah, blah. We get it. And I, I hear it, right? But ultimately, I want to put into perspective the effect that public ab- accountability has on your life. Now, public accountability in your personal life, earlier we used the example of weight loss, generally has the effect of people hitting the goals that they want to hit. You know, that's why these companies are so successful. It's not just because, you know, I'm sure they went out and did lots and lots of research into how people lose weight, you know, eat less, move more kind of thing. But what they did was they created an environment in which that could be sustainable and in which they weren't going to have to bombard people with tons of sciencey stuff. They were like, no, we're just going to make it public accountability. You know, so if you do the work, you're going to get celebrated publicly. And if you don't do the work, then ultimately you're going to have to show up and Um, you know, experience the consequences of not holding yourself accountable and, and you're having to do that in a very public way. And that makes people take action. It spurs people into taking action and gaining that momentum. So public accountability is really, really helpful in terms of hitting those goals and making, making big things happen. The other thing is that accountability is huge when it comes to your bottom line. If you suddenly announce that you're putting a big goal in place and you have publicly announced that in some way, shape or form, whether it's to yourself, I mean, for me, I prefer public accountability to actually be public. So I will share it, you know, with my coach or with my mentors or with um, masterminds that I am participating in as a part, as a mastermind participant myself. Because I believe it's important because that way, when people come back to me, when I make a commitment and I say, at the end of this month, I'm going to share my income report and it's going to look like this, or at the end of this month, I'm going to um, share my latest project that I've been working on and it's going to look like this. I have that accountability. I know that there is a deadline. I know that people are looking for something specific within a specific time frame, And it is my job. It is my responsibility at that point to make that happen. And so I do. So I want you to really think about that, you know, think about that this week. Are you keeping yourself accountable and who are you keeping yourself accountable to? Is it to you? Is it to a paid community that you're involved with? Is it to your free community? And look at how that is reflecting back. Is your community, is your tribe reacting in the same way you are? Are they putting the work in? Are they holding themselves accountable? Are they holding you accountable? More importantly, are they achieving the things that they want to achieve? Remember, together we rise. I will see you next week for the next episode.